this is uh, friend Jorge's house. We're gonna put Permatrack up today. This is all the stuff we need for Permatrack. This house we're doing today is about 300 feet of track all the way around. So we've got seven boxes of track. We've got seven bags of pixels. There's enough pixels in each bag for one box of track. And then some of the other things we have here that we need, this is the control box, this is new. So it's got the power supply, the ditch quad, it's got a five volt power supply and a relay so that you can turn off the big power supply and have it last a lot longer and not use power, uh, but still be able to communicate with the ditch quad. Uh, so that's all integrated at all. It's all pre-wired. It's all in this big waterproof box and it's got uh, connections coming out of it. One that's just the power. So all you have to do with this box is plug it into the wall and it's ready to go. It's got four pigtails. These are mini X-Connect pigtails. So four pigtails coming out of it here. Those will plug into the pixel strips. And then uh, it's got some red and black here. This is for power injection. So if we needed power injection, which we might, this is where we'll get it from. And it's all already pre-wired in here. You don't have to do anything with this. We're gonna mount that box. We're gonna plug it in to the wall and we're gonna start plugging in pixels to these pigtails and just go to town. Nothing else to do. So we've got an outlet here. We're actually gonna put the box over here just because there's not quite enough room there. But now everything's up, mounted, ready to go. We're gonna be able to connect our pixel strings to these, power injection to this and this if we need it. We got our antenna here and then we've got our our plug just to go into the outlet and that thing will be ready to go. So as soon as we plug this in, this comes on and these are ready to go. So I just grabbed a little bit of pixels here and it's got a, uh, a preset already playing so you can see that the lights are working. So we can just plug this into each one of these. So right off the bat, it's working. Pixels are going. All we gotta do is just start hanging pixels now. This is done, ready to go. Like the hardest part before was always the getting this box going and this box is now done, already ready. All right, so this is how this stuff works. So this is the track, it's aluminum. It's awesome, it's super easy to work with. And then these are the pixels. There's one pixel for each hole in the track. So they just have to go down the track. So they can just set up shop here somewhere and just start popping these in, just like that. Okay. And then once they get them in, these extra wires you can just kind of push down in a little bit. And that's that, just keep on going. We take these, which are not aluminum, these are, these are uh, sheet metal. We take these and I've got a bunch of uh, screws there and we just put them where we want them. Put them, I like to put them just at the ends. Just one here, you know, and one here. And that's it. And then we just snap these together. So we can start, we can start mounting these to where we want them up there. Start the boys poking these uh, pixels into the holes and then start popping them in. Sound okay? Made some extensions. So I got, uh, this mini X connect extensions and then we're testing as we go. So we get an extension made, put some pixels on it to make sure I didn't mess it up and put the right wires wrong or anything. And then we've already got track here, ready to go. Jorge's uh, putting it up.
There we go. First try. So we know we've got to go real far to the back corner of the house. So we've got here, I don't even know how much wire, but it's maybe 80 feet or something of wire. Uh, and so we just connected it to the control box and then to this strip. And this is what it's doing. It's blinking and flickering. So what that tells us is that's too much wire. The signal is too far um, from the first pixel, from the control box to the first pixel is too far. So we get this. Now, two things we can do. First thing that we'll do, we're going to go into the control box and there's a little switch we can flick. We'll flip that switch and maybe that'll fix it. If that doesn't fix it, then we're going to go about halfway through this wire and we're going to cut it and we're going to put in a data booster. And uh, hopefully one of those two things will fix it. So this is the Dig Quad. This is the ESP32, the little white part. You pull that little white part off and now under here you got four switches. Uh, there's one for each output. So this is LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, LED 4. LED 3 is the output that we've got connected to this really long wire that's going to run to the back corner of the house. So I'm going to take this little switch here and flip it down. So that puts a different resistor in line and it changes the quality of the signal and maybe that's going to be better for running this long distance. So now we can put this back on and make sure these pins are lined up when you do that. And then push that back up in there. Now we can turn it back on and we can check and see if, uh, if that fixed it or not. Ta-da, right? Voila, there it is. So it's working. Uh, we flipped that switch and now no more flickering. Uh, it looks pretty solid. Uh, that can still change once we put a whole bunch of other lights on here and there's a bit more of a draw and a, more of a load. Yeah. Maybe the voltage might be too low and things can change. So we may still need to add that data booster in the middle of the line, but for right now, it's working. And all we had to do is flip that switch. Why? <laughs> okay. So we want to end that right where that other piece is coming down from the, from the peak. So we got how many there? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Cut in front of the seventh. Okay, so we'll cut off seven and then that'll put us up against there and then we've got our jump to run our wire up to the other piece. Okay. Like I said, Permatrack is made out of aluminum and it's actually pretty thick aluminum, but you can still cut it with just regular tin snips. Now some of you might be tempted to get really picky on how you make your cuts. I really encourage you not to spend a lot of time trying to make this look perfect. I promise you that everyone is going to be so mesmerized by your lights that they're not going to notice if your cuts are a little wonky. For a lot of these connections, I like to use these clickets. They're super fast. They're super easy. They're pretty reliable. Every once in a while, you might get a bad connection. If that happens, I usually just put in a new clicket. But if it's a critical splice, then I use solder tubes. So it clicked. I always want to click it more, but a click, a click is a click. All right, so now white stripe. Put the white stripe. Mm -hmm. Blue. Okay. Easy. And that's it. Done. Okay. There's one spot on this house where we're going to have a gap of about seven or eight feet in between pixels. Right here. Anytime we're going to jump a gap in the ballpark of about 10 feet, it's a good idea to add a data booster. This is one style of data booster called an F-Amp. These are available on the Permatrack website, and they come already with mini X-Connect connectors on each end. So when you make one of these extensions, you want to make sure you get the direction correct on the data booster. There are arrows that show you which way the data is supposed to go, but the connectors also make it so that you can't really mess it up. So the best way that I've found to make an extension like this so that you don't mess up which is the input and which is the output is just to do one side at a time. I'm going to start with the input side, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to cut the connector off on one side, and then I'm going to take one piece of my wire that's about five feet long, and then I'll splice one side of the wire to the data booster and the other side of the wire to the connector. 
The red, yellow, and black wire that I'm using is actually too thick for clickets, so I'm using solder tubes. The wire that has the white stripe is the ground, so that lines up with the black. The middle wire then goes to yellow, that's data, and the wire opposite of the ground wire is the power wire that goes to the red. So I've done the extension on the input side, now I'm going to do the same thing on the output side. Now the most important part about this is that because I did them one side at a time, I know for sure that when I connect these connectors to my pixels, that the data signal will be traveling in the correct direction. Pretty soon we will have some shorter extensions on the website that have many X-Connect connectors on both ends, so you may never have to do this, but if you ever have to, this is how you do it, and it's super simple. This is what my data boosted extension cord looks like. I made it about 10 feet of wire and put the F amp right in the middle. We got all this, we come to the end here, and then we've got to jump this gap. And this is seven feet or so, but knowing that if we go past about 10, we start to get flickering and stuff, we made that extension cord. It's got the F amp in the middle, uh, data booster, and then it connects up there. Jorge's got it all nice and tucked in underneath that flashing. And then you can see up there, it's looking perfect. No flickering, it's going perfect. So our data booster did the job. That's all for now. My main goals for this video were to introduce the control box and discuss a couple methods for countering flickering, namely the switch on the dig quad and the data booster and how to make an extension. I hope that was helpful to you. If you have more questions about setting up WLED or anything else LED related, I've got other videos for that. And you can always come to Discord and find somebody willing to chat and help you. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios.